Our services can be watched on YouTube as well on our church website at any time. We're expanding our ministries, online ministries, and if you're a parent and your child is in kindergarten through the third grade, check your email. You should have received an email from Annette Barber. If you didn't receive an email, call the church office and let them know. Gifts and tithes can be uh, mailed to the church. I'm here each day to check the box. And if you're self-quarantined and need groceries, medicine, or other necessities, give the church office a call, and I will arrange for volunteer help. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege we have to come together and worship you online. We thank you, Lord, as we celebrate this sixth Sunday of Easter, which happens to be Ascension Day, that this is the day that we celebrate Christ ascending into the heavens, Lord. Lord, we continue to lift up to you uh, those that have been suffering from this COVID-19. We continue to lift up our physicians and nurses and health care providers, Lord. We thank you for their service, Lord, and we pray that you'll be with and protect them. We lift up our scientists to you. We pray that they may be able to discover a vaccine as soon as possible, Lord. We lift up those who are in the hospitals, the nursing homes, rehab centers. Lord, we lift up to you and ask for your physical healing. We lift up to you those that are unemployed, those that are impacted financially through all this, Lord. Uh, be with them. And we ask that you'll be with those with small businesses, Lord, that, that have lost uh, a tremendous amount. We ask that you be with them, too, during this, this very difficult time. Lord, we pray for those of, in our congregations, also for friends and family, Lord, whatever they're dealing with. Maybe they need physical healing, mental healing, spiritual or emotional healing. We lift them up to you, Lord, for the healing that they need. We lift up to you those that are depressed, those who are isolated. We pray that you'll be with them in a special way through your Holy Spirit to, to let them know that they are loved and cared for. We lift up to you those who have lost loved ones and those who are grieving, that you'll be with them as your Holy Spirit will comfort them. And on this memorial weekend, we especially lift up to you those that have given their lives uh, for our freedom. We thank you for their, their sacrifice that we can enjoy coming together to worship you, whether it's um, in person or online, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those who have given their lives so that we have this freedom. At this time, let us take a moment of silence to honor our fallen soldiers. Lord, we thank you for them. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. 
It's a good thing to worship together this morning. Um, when I think about uh, the ascension uh, that Pastor Ken's going to be uh, preaching on this morning, of course, we're reminded that he said, you know, they said uh, that he will return and we should be, you know, anticipating Christ's return. And so I kind of think about, I guess I was just thinking about if God came back, if Jesus came back like right now, like what would I like to find him find that I was doing when he showed up? Um, you know, sometimes when I'm be pretty sure he would, I wouldn't really want him to walk in right then. Um, you know, because I'm in a bad mood. You know, I'm kind of cranky. I know Ken that doesn't happen very often, but every once in a great while. Um, you know, when I'm uh, a little miffed, or maybe I'm watching something that I kind of turn on the TV, or maybe I put in a movie and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure I probably should have done. That sort of thing. So what would you like it to be doing? What would you like to be doing when he showed up? And I thought, well, you know, when you were doing an act of service, that would be pretty cool if Jesus came along and said, hey, you want me to help out? And you were helping somebody. Um, you know, maybe you were uh, reading to the kids or doing a devotional with your wife, you know, and something like that. And, but I guess because I'm up here a lot, you know, I've always thought it'd be cool. Back and Jesus slipped in the back of the service, you know, and he was, you know, raising his hands and just praising with us. That would be pretty cool. Um, there's a verse in uh, Psalm 22 3 in the King James Version that says, But thou art holy, O thou, thou inhabitest the praises of Israel. Um, that he actually inhabits our praises. We think about what it would be like if Jesus slipped in, but you know what? He's here already, because the Holy Spirit, which we'll be talking about next week, Pentecost, we find out that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And so he's already here, so we don't need to think about what it would be like if he was here, he's already here. Um, Psalm 150 says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise God in his, praise him in his highest heavens, praise him for his acts of power, and praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourines and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we got our drummer back this morning. He's safely behind the plexiglass back there, if anybody's concerned. Um, so I think Michael's uh, fine back there. So we're... Uh, and we're going to enjoy praising God with, uh, with the resounding symbols today. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, I'll have to slow myself down because I get so excited when I have a drummer. So, uh, so it's nice to have a drummer back this, this week. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's sing together. So.
electricity didn't work. Well, then those lights wouldn't be any good to me, but this candle would still work. I could take this candle down off the altar, and I could use it to light my way to try and find what it was I was looking for. Once I found it, I could take it and put it back on the altar table where it could remind people that Jesus' presence is with us all the time. That's kind of the way God had it planned. There was a time when people really needed Jesus to be right here on earth. They needed to understand more about what God wanted them to know. They needed to know that their sins could be saved, and Jesus did just that for them. He came to earth, but then went back to be with God the Creator, and told the disciples and his followers, I'll come back again, I'll be back. That's a wonderful promise, to know that Jesus will be back, that Jesus, the light of the world, is always with us, and always will be. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for the gift you have given us in the light, the light of the world, Jesus Christ, who exists with you in heaven, who came to earth to be with us, and we know will come again. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for saving us. We pray this in your Son, the light of the world's name. Amen. Our text comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, so I'd like you to turn with me to Luke chapter 24, starting at the 36th verse, and we're going to read down to the 53rd verse. Luke 24, 36 to 53. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he said, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of world fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that's written about me in the law of Moses the prophets, and the Psalms. When he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures, he told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from all high. Then he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that you have given us, that you indeed ascended back into heaven. Now we have an advocate. Now we have one that is looking out for us and one who can be our great high priest. 
one who intercedes for us and hears us, one who knows what it's like to live among us and to be human. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we pray that we will be witnesses to the nations of you as you have asked us to be. Help us to be the disciples you have called us to be. I pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, and I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. And either through me or in spite of me, may your word speak to your people. In the name of the risen Christ, I pray. Amen. This is one of the obscure Christian holidays, which most Christians are unaware of. Today is Ascension Day. Ascension Day is the day in the church calendar that we celebrate Jesus' ascension into heaven. We celebrate the ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven. This was the last time with the real Jesus the disciples had. It was the last time they had with the physical Jesus. It was the last time that they had with their friend and Savior. Jesus gave them his very last instructions. You will receive power and be my witnesses to Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then he disappears. On the surface, it probably didn't seem like a great moment. The eleven disciples having nothing to show for following Jesus for three years. He ascended into heaven. Jesus did make it clear to them that they would soon receive the Holy Spirit. In the days and years to come, it would become very apparent that something happened to these disciples. With nothing but a promise and a prayer, these 11 people started the church. The followers became leaders. The listeners became missionaries. The healed became healers. The disciples became apostles. Apostles, witnesses of the risen Lord. They stopped looking up into the heavens, looked at each other, and got on with the business of being the church. The church has been given a mission. The mission is to witness, to witness in word and in deed to Jesus Christ. Before he leaves them, Jesus gives the disciples his great commission to be witnesses to all the world. This great commission helps us to focus on the question, why are we here? Why is the church here? For three years, the Lord Jesus taught by word and example. He taught him a new way of life. Jesus did the teaching. Jesus did the miracles. Jesus did the preaching. Jesus made all the ministry decisions. Now it was time for the disciples to begin their ministry. The disciples did not leave Jesus. Notice that Jesus left the disciples. But he didn't leave them before he trained them. And he promised them that the Holy Spirit will guide them and give them power to do their ministry. The responsibility of such a task must have seemed overwhelming. Jesus said to them, You are my witnesses. And see, I am sending you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. The risen Christ does not stay with his followers. He ascends to heaven. But in doing so, Jesus is no longer limited by space and time. Jesus is no longer limited by a physical body. He can now truly be Lord of all. 
Ascension Day serves a reminder that we are to be witnesses of Jesus Christ in this world as members of His body, the church. We testify to the truth. Christ Jesus is the truth. And we testify to the content of His message. And we testify that Jesus reigns now beyond space and time. He reigns beyond sin and death. The disciples were dumbfounded as they stood and watched Jesus rising into the heavens. They were told to stop gazing into the heavens and start being witnesses. In other words, they were told to, to get busy. They are to tell what they had seen and heard of Jesus in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Most of us would agree that it's nice to know that Jesus ascended into heaven. You know, every time we say the Apostles' Creed, that early creed of the church, it reminds us. Every time we say that creed, it reminds us that his ascension into heaven was a big deal. The creed talks about the ascension of Jesus as one of the major events of Jesus' love. In fact, I'd like us to say the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to read it, and I invite you to say it with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. Here it is. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father of Mighty. From then she will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The ascension is one of the major events in his life. It's one of the major events in our Lord's saving work. He ascended to heaven he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Now, sitting at God's right hand does not mean that Jesus is in a specific place. Sometimes we conjure up images of Jesus, you know, sitting on a, a big, comfy chair. Now, Jesus could be sitting on a big, comfy chair, but what that really means is that Jesus rules with God the Father and God the Son. Being at the right hand of somebody means that you're co-ruler. So that means Jesus has the ruling authority with God the Father and God the Son. Jesus' ascension is a big deal because now that he rules, he also intercedes for us. Jesus, who died on the cross, now lives again, and he ascended into heaven to become our advocate with God the Father. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 says, Jesus Christ is one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes, who indeed is interceding for us. So every time we feel guilty every time Satan or the accuser comes to us and tries to accuse us of some sin that we committed, Jesus is there to continually say that this is my friend for whom I die. This is my friend for whom I suffer and die. The account has been fully paid. The absence of a physical, measurable, visible Jesus does not mean that he's not with us. 
We just receive his presence in a new way. We cannot see Jesus because he does not reveal himself to our eyes. Not because he's not here. Jesus has never stopped being here. He never stopped being Emmanuel, God with us. As the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10, he who descended is one who also ascended far above the heavens, that he might fulfill all things. Jesus Christ was there from the beginning with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. He descended because one of us, the Word made flesh, fully human, but still fully divine. Then he ascended into heaven and went back with God the Father and God the Spirit. You know, it's been said often that it's good to have friends in high places. Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, you do. You have an advocate. Because Jesus has ascended, in fact, we have more than just a friend in a high place. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 16 says this. We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. For we do not, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The true master of this universe and every other universe that's out there is our friend. He ascended on high, but yet he's still with us today. He touches us in our humanity and touches God in his divinity and bridges the gap between us and God. He is interceding for us before the throne of God. And he is still with us today. On this Ascension Day, we are to think about what Jesus' physical absence meant for the disciples and what it means for us today. Jesus gives his followers the great commission to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins to all the nations. Jesus' followers are to be active in their own ministries. Jesus sends us out into the world to preach, to teach, to baptize. What a wonderful privilege we have to witness to the truth of Christ, to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're unsure of your faith, or maybe you're not a follower of Christ, but would like to be, I invite you to say this prayer with me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus is your son, and he died on the cross for my sins, and you raised him from the dead. I want to make him my Lord and Savior. Send the Holy Spirit into my life, and help me be the person you want me to be. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, I encourage you to share that with a friend.
Yeah. Uh-huh. 